Hello, this is Audiobug, and today we are reading some stories from the subreddit r slash am I overreacting. Story 1. Am I overreacting? My sister invited herself on my vacation. For context, I, male 18, and my mom, female 47, planned a vacation to Florida together. This trip is supposed to be my Christmas gift from her. The plan is for my mom to go with me, because that's what I want. She offered to pay for one of my friends to go instead, but I wanted her to come because I know she's always wanted to. My sister, female 24, is also getting a vacation for Christmas. She's going to New York with her best friend, weeks apart from my vacation, so we're not actually going at Christmas. I'm not going on this trip because, like I said, it's my sister's gift. A couple of days ago, my mom came to have a talk with me. She told me that my sister asked if she could come to Florida with me instead of her because it would be a good opportunity for us to spend time together. My mom told me that she agreed to this and now I'm going with my sister. I love my sister. I really do. But it seems pretty distasteful for her to just ask my mom to give up her spot like that. I'm actually shocked that she even had the audacity. I'm not opposed to spending more time with her, but there are better ways to do it. My mom told me it's better to just go on the vacation and have a good time, but I'm not sure if I can actually keep my mouth shut until then. I'm mad at my sister because she obviously just wants a notification and not to actually spend more time with me. If she wanted that, she could have spoken to me and I'd have come up with something cheaper for us to do together. Am I overreacting or should I say something to her? It sounds like your mom might be trying to get out the vacation now. It seems like she's trying to not hurt your feelings and offering it to your sister instead of your sister asking. I'm not sure, but I think you need to have a talk with both of them at once about it. Let's see what the comments have to say. Speak up. It's your gift. You decide who goes. Exactly. Set healthy boundaries now or she'll walk all over you. Or talk to your mom. If your sister wants to bond that bad, she had her own vacation. She could take you on that instead of the friend. Cancel the trip. It's already rotten. If your sis wants time with you, go to the park. Alternatively, ask her to give you a place to New York, so you'll have time together. Definitely speak up. As a mother, I love it when my kids want to do things together, but I also love it when they want to spend time with me. I wonder if your mom thought you would prefer to spend time with your sister and you were taking her because you thought that she wanted you to. You gotta let your mom know how you feel. We try really hard, but we don't always get it right. Or comments. She offered to pay for one of my friends to go instead. My sister asked as she could come to Florida with me instead of her. Honestly, it seems like your mom just doesn't want to go on this vacation, has been looking for a way to get out of it, so she asked her sister and used it as a disguise. I don't think your sister invited herself along at all. Regardless, I don't think you're overreacting. You had a vision of how you wanted this vacation to go and to spend some quality time together with your mom, and now that's not going to happen the way you wish. If you feel it will get things off your chest to speak up, definitely speak up. Yeah, that sounds like a good thing to do. Just have a talk with both of them, preferably together so they don't like tell you alternating stories because they might have just different ideas or be hearing different things. Maybe your mom told your sister that you wanted to spend more time with her, or maybe your mom is pressuring your sister. Could be any way, and you just don't know until you all talk. Next story. Story 2. Am I overreacting? My kid's stepmom buzzed off my kid's new haircut. I had cut my son's hair when he was with me last, and when he came home from his dad's house, I found that his stepmom had taken him to get his head buzzed. I'm livid. According to my kids, his stepmom didn't like the cut I gave him, so she took him to get a cut. Now listen, I'm not a barber, but I could do a basic boy's cut. My son looked good. Could a professional do better? Of course. But I can't afford that, so I drew his hair at home. He liked his hair. He had no complaints when I cut it. It was ready to go for Thanksgiving. Whoever did it did a really terrible buzz job. They butchered his cowlick, left jagged edges at the front. It's a cheap, cost-butters buzz. It's not an improvement on what I had done. 
I know his dad does stuff like this to get at me. It's a very, very difficult co-parenting relationship. He was extremely abusive to me during our relationship, and he still uses the kids to control, punish, or otherwise hurt me. The stepmom, on the other hand, is actually a pretty nice person, from what I can tell. I think she loves my kids. I know they love her. And I know, from experience, that she's probably living in the dark. But even if she doesn't know how abusive he is, even if she thinks I'm a really bad mom, and he's a great dad, and I'm a liar, and he tells the truth, and the whole lie he's created for her, shouldn't she know better than to cut off my kid's hair? After he told her, I don't want to get my hair cut, my mom just cut it? I know, hair grows back. It's not even really about the hair. It's the principle of the thing. Taking liberties to cut off a haircut, she knew I had done. It falls in line with the many other instances of her and my ex attempting to set themselves up as my kid's real parents and me as a throwaway parent. I've sent what was honestly a very restrained confirmation text to her, and I wait to see how she responds before I say anything further. I'm waiting for an apology or some recognition that she messed up. So, am I overreacting? I personally don't think so. It sounds like she really pushed the boundary, and she should have asked you first before making a decision unilaterally. It's a co-parenting relationship, so you have to both talk to each other. And also, she's a step of it. She's newer to the relationship between you and uh, your ex-husband, so she should be careful and like asking to see what's okay. And maybe not just taking the husband's side for it. Let's see what the comments have to say. Oh no, not overreacting. She's totally pulling something and starting drama. OP responded, Can you imagine doing that to someone else's kid and thinking you had any right to do it? More responses. I both have a stepchild and three of my own who are grown and I would never step out of line like that. I would raise anything if it happened to me. Tell this woman to know her place, because this ain't it. OP responded, One time I accidentally trimmed my stepdaughter's hair too much. I had the permission from my husband to trim it, but I messed up and cut too much. Her mom was understandably so mad at me, and I went out of my way to apologize, because I knew she had every right to be mad. But this, this is so much more brazen than that. Why have I not gotten an apology low? More responses. No. I have two stepsons, and this is a big no. Wow. What? My stepson asked me to dye his hair blue, and his dad, my partner, didn't care. But my response was, of course, buddy, as long as it's okay with Bob, too. More comments. Absolutely not. She has no right to do anything to your child's hair. This needs to be addressed. Honestly, I'd reconsider letting her around the kid completely. I don't think she really has a choice but letting the kid around the stepmom since it's her uh, ex-husband's partner, but yeah, it's a big boundary that was crossed and she's definitely not overreacting. Next story. Story 3. Am I overreacting for thinking of suing my school? So a couple of months ago, my school forced boys to cut their hair short. Like their words were, if you can grasp it, it's too long. Like, do they want us bald? Anyway, next day when some students, including me, didn't cut their not-so-long hair, they took a pair of scissors and literally cut the hair, making it look so horrible so they would have to cut it. I was so angry that I thought of getting the police involved, since this violated some laws, I checked, but ended up just giving the school a letter that said me and my guardians don't get permission for such things, and so what happened again we would go to the authorities. I also emailed the National Human Rights Organization, and they did warn the school, but their reaction when telling us about that was basically that it was for our own good and that college would be even worse, etc. So it happened again today. The teacher, who is the one to forcibly cut hair, comes into our class and announces that all students, just boys, better cut their hair short or he will do so for them. Not only that, looking at me, he said it didn't matter if we complained, he would still cut our hair forcibly. I didn't cut my hair, because forcibly cutting hair, especially after warning them once, 
and also I don't see the correlation between hair and studying. Have you seen Isaac Newton's hair, Albert Einstein, Aizau, and so many more? I feel super angry, and if they cut my hair tomorrow, I will file a police report and sue them, because forcing me to change my looks, well, it's not a hygiene problem and not an education problem. I'm first in my grade, and after looking up some national and international laws, it turns out that it is indeed a crime. Am I overreacting? FYI, by the way, I live in Nepal. Yeah, definitely not overreacting at all. That's, that's a very dehumanizing thing to do to kids. And just a power trip on the teacher's part. They could definitely get sued for that, like, majorly. I think they're just relying on that of the students standing up for themselves. Let's see what the cons have to say. Man, where in the world do you go to school? This sounds insane. If a teacher tried forcibly cutting my hair, I'd be throwing hands or just straight up going home. You are not overreacting. This is crazy. I would never be okay where I'm from. You're not overreacting. This is insane. That teacher is a bully and the school is enabling him. You're right to be angry. They have no right to touch your hair. It's your body, your choice. You're not the one who needs to apologize. They do. It's a crime and you're right to sue them. Don't let them get away with this. You're not alone. There are others who have been through this. Stand up for yourself. You're not overreacting. You're just fighting for your rights. You've got this. You're not alone. You're brave. You're strong. You're amazing. OP responded, thanks. A kid in Texas recently sued his school over his hair and loss, but he was black and that was in Texas, so go figure. Might have been like a legal loophole or something there. I know it happens to black and native students a lot where they get their hair cut forcibly by teachers due to racism and they tend to get away with it in a lot of cases. Just little loopholes or overlooking in the system. I know the loophole that they usually go with is they were doing it for the kid's benefit because their hair was like magic or something. And it never was in pretty much every case, but people on power love to go after, uh, love to go after vulnerable groups and take advantage of what they can get away with. More comments? OP responded. I have thought about leaving this school and joining another one. It's just that this year is about to end. It's currently the eighth month of our calendar, and I'll be taking C, an exam whose results matter for college. I don't want to disappoint my parents. It's hard to join another one at this time, and the way of teaching will take time to adapt. It's my last year here. Another comment. Don't ask Reddit about suing anyone. Talk to a lawyer. Since you're almost graduated, hang in there. Don't even consider filing until you are out and you don't have to deal with retaliation. Yeah, talking to a lawyer does sound like the best advice in this situation. Next story. Story 4. Am I overreacting? Wife refuses to take her allergies seriously, so I kicked her out. Last night, my 33 male wife, 33 female, came home from work and pulled out a container of something I wasn't familiar with and she sat down to eat. She works at a grocery store, so I know I don't think too much of it, but when I got a whiff of it, it smelled like crab salad. Now for context, my wife has a pretty intense allergy to green and red onions, but is fine with yellow and white onions. Now in America, we do have ingredients listed on packages, which is required by law. However, com companies are allowed to be vague with certain ingredients, and onions are one of those. Normally, if I spot onions listed as an ingredient, it's a hard pass for me. I don't even chance it. My wife, however, doesn't do it. Back to last night. I got up and asked to see the container, which was half gone at this point. I read the ingredient list. Onions, plain as day, were listed towards the top of the ingredients. I asked her if she borrowed to read the ingredients, and she said she did, but assumed they were the safe ones. At this point, I grabbed the EpiPen from her purse, which I feel the need to add. She only started carrying an EpiPen in Bedishol because I badgered her for a couple of years about it when we started dating and kept it close by. I was upset at because I used to work in a kitchen. I know well that green onions and seafood are almost inseparable in those salads, but I keep a calm demeanor 
and just watched her. Within a few minutes, she started having a reaction. At first, I wanted to give her the epi because she had eaten so much, but she refused and said she would just take some Metadrill and lay down on the couch. Eventually, she needed to be given the EpiPen, and I drove her to the ER. Keep in mind, this is taking place at about 12 a.m., and I work at 8 p.m. We get to the ER, and they embed her. They tell me that she needs to stay overnight for observation because of how severe her reaction is, and I talk to my wife about it. We know the staff here pretty well, and I know she is in good hands, so I check with her to see if she would be okay if I went home to get some sleep before work. She said it would be totally fine. However, as of leaving, I chose to call her mom and asked if my wife could spend the next couple of days at her house. You see, I was furious with her at this moment because I feel like I am the only one who takes the allergies seriously and I am not the one who will literally die if I eat the wrong onions. Yet, this isn't the first time she has been careless and ended up needing to go to the hospital because she had a reaction. There have been many times before where she just ate first Ask questions later, and that frustrates me to no end that she doesn't take it seriously enough to take a few moments to read the ingredients and just avoid onions she could not plainly identify. So since I wasn't getting through to her, and the hospital visits seemed to be ignored as well, I decided that making her stay at her mother's for a few days might send a message. I got home, packed her a suitcase for the next few days, when I got the call that she was being discharged at 7 this morning, I picked her up and drove her to her mother's house. I told her I was dropping her off and that this wasn't permanent, but I needed a couple days to cool down, and she needed to be monitored anyway since she just got out of the hospital, so this was the best course of action. She cried a lot, begged me to take her home instead, but I refused to budge. Her mom brought her inside, and I told her that I would be blocking my wife's calls for the day while at work so if there was an emergency, that she would need to get a hold of me. Her mom agreed and told me that this was probably the best idea, since she was just as frustrated that her daughter seemed to not be taking this seriously. So here I am now, at work and feeling like I might be overreacting by kicking out her out for the next few days. Did I? TLDR, wife had allergic reaction because she ignored the ingredients, so I am making her stay with her mom for a few days to teach her a lesson. Edit. So I realized after reading a few responses that I might seem a little heartless here, so I want to clear a few things up. I am only blocking her calls during work because it is a double shift and I need to be fully attentive to my work, and since I don't get any sleep, it's going to be challenging enough as it is. If there's something serious, her mother can and will call me. Second, I packed her favorite things and I'm having her favorite dinner sent to her mom's house tonight, so she is well cared for and not just being abandoned. I have never just abandoned her, and my frustration comes from a fear of losing her to something as avoidable as an allergic reaction. I also picked up an additional shift for tomorrow to make up for the time she is missing from work, so she won't have to worry about the missing hours. I am and will always support her, but this is somewhat of an intervention for her as well. Yeah, I don't feel like you're overreacting. She's really playing fast and loose with her own life in that situation. Let's see what the comments have to say. I feel like you're playing with my life too. If you carelessly eat something and die from it, you'll be leaving me behind, heartbroken and alone. When you carelessly eat something that could kill you, you're not only risking your own life, you're risking me losing the one person that matters most to me in the entire world. It might help her explain it to her. Another comment. I went this route with my husband, who went through a traumatic event, and though he was utterly fine, and was going back to work immediately, and he worked with machinery and stuff, so that worried me. I could clearly see he was not himself in this scenario, and why he would be. But he was in shock, and just thought he needed to be at work, like always. So I simply stated, please don't go tomorrow. It might be selfish of me to ask, but if something happened to you and you get injured at work because you're unfocused right now, it would crush me. I cannot lose you. Please stay home for me, if not for yourself. He did, and a good thing that was. He totally broke down. I'm just glad he wasn't in a possibly dangerous situation during it. More comments. 
not overreacting, the mental load of dealing with someone who has zero self-preservation skills must be exhausting. I think all parents would agree. Yep, but he's not her parent, but I bet he feels like he is. Yeah, probably having to worry about what she eats all the time. Must be horrible for him. I really think that she should take more care, if not for her own sake, for her husband's sake. Hopefully, she thinks about it more like that. And takes it more seriously. Next story. Story 5. Am I overreacting? Thinking of cutting ties with my sister. I, 23 female, live with my sister, 27 female, and we're stuck in a cycle of arguments. A year ago, she studied abroad without any money, despite warnings, and ended up borrowing 10k from me. She hasn't repaid it, often calling me selfish and saying I only care about money, claiming she never pressured me to pay her back. She compares it to paying for my prom years ago, even though I offered to repay her. She also uses my belongs without permission, damages them, refuses to put them back properly, dismissing my concerns as me being mad for no reason. She calls me bipolar and accuses me of never giving back or taking accountability, often implying she's better because she's an older sister and she always gives. When I confront her, she makes it seem like I'm overreacting and says, maybe not everyone could be as good as selfish as her. Although we do have a lot of great moments, these arguments make her want to cut her off as soon as I move out. I'm torn between the relief of not dealing with her and the sadness of potentially losing our relationship. TLDR My sister owes me 10k but won't repay it, constantly uses and damages my belongings without permission, and accuses me of being selfish and obsessed with money. Arguments often end with her claiming she's better because she's more giving. Considering cutting her off, I'm conflicted. Yeah, I think I'd wait on cutting her off until you don't live together, because that's definitely exacerbating the situation. Like, it would be good to set up boundaries with her, definitely, but you can't do that while you're in the same house. If you were in different houses, you could set up boundaries and stuff. You could still have communication with your sister, but on your own terms. Or at least I hope so. Let's see what the comments have to say. My sister was a real paid while we were living together. And when I say paid, I'm actually toting down the seriously messed up things she did to me, like outing me to the entire family without my permission. I did eventually forgive her, though it wasn't easy, but our relationship has never been better since I moved out. Now we only see each other three or four times a year. My advice, move out as soon as you can. From there, we'll figure out if you still want her in your life or not, but at least you'll have your space. OP responded, Do we have the same sister? Mine also outed me to my family. I'm really sorry you had to go through that. I'm glad things improved for you once you moved out. Thanks for your advice. I'll definitely move out once Lee sends, and hopefully things will get better. Yeah, hopefully for you. I'm so sorry you guys had to deal with that. Well, that's all the stories I have to read for you guys today. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in another video. Bye!